you know, the Yakuza are so ingrained in Japanese society that I think it'll be a while before you get rid of them. My name is Jake Adelstein. I am an investigative journalist in Japan. I have been covering crime and news in Japan for 25 years. Next year, I will have been covering the Yakuza, which are the Japanese mafia, for 25 years, which is a quarter of a century, almost, almost half my life. That is one of the crazy things about covering organized crime in Japan, is that you have these courtesy calls. Even when I was writing the article about the connections between the Yakuza and the Olympics, um, and, the, uh, and the head of the Amaguchi Gumi um, being photographed with the vice chairman of the Olympic group, I, I made a courtesy call before I ran the article. When the, the courtesy call was essentially, you, you call someone in the Amaguchi Gumi and you say, I'm writing this article, I'm not asking you for permission, but I'm just letting you know. And the only request they had was that I crop the photo so that you didn't see was missing a finger. And I'm like, I can't crop the photo because the photo is as I received it. Um, but that can't do. But at the same time, because they're so public, because they have an image to obtain, um, they're not killing journalists left and right like they do in, in Mexico or Guatemala or other places in the world, or Russia even. Um, that makes working in the genre a little bit easier. I, there are many advantages to being a foreigner. One of the advantages is that people assume you're stupid. I mean, I, and I don't mind, but because Japanese is really a difficult language. But because they assume that you don't really get it, they over-explain. And over-explaining is great because people tell you more than they should. And, and also, the, you know, there's a, a strange phenomenon which also happens, which is you don't really belong in Japanese society, right? You'll, I mean, you might belong in your own neighborhood, in your own... Um, immediate circle of friends, but you're not Japanese. It's clear when you're looking at your face that you're not Japanese. So you're enough of an outsider that you can almost can become like a priest to some people. It's like they feel like they can confess to you things they wouldn't tell their Japanese colleagues. I mean, that is a huge part of what we do as an investigative journalist is try to get people to talk about things that may not necessarily benefit them. The shooting has police on alert for a possible spike in Yakuza gang violence. With more than 50,000 members spread over 21 independently run cartels, the Yakuza is one of the most powerful mafia-like groups in the world. This book, The Last Yakuza, is a chronicle of the Japanese mafia after the Second World War and how they came to power, and how they're fading from power why the Japanese government allows them to exist and, and pardon me for a second here, and why you can buy fan magazines on the streets and they can have business cards and they still exist very much in the public domain. That's very fascinating stuff. But to make it interesting and a, a way to tell that history, um, I decided that I would focus on the lives of several Yakuza bosses and through their lives tell the whole story of the Yakuza. Due to great political connections and the fact that they are organized crime and not disorganized crime, and that there are certain things they will not do, that the social contract that they have made is, we'll take care of all these other vices and extortion and racketeering. And in return, we won't cause street crime and we won't allow street crime. They may not harm you if you're not running a business, if you're just a salary man working for Nissan or whatever, and you're not going to dodgy host clubs, you will never run into these guys. You can live your entire life without trouble for them. But if you are running a small business, are you running a corporation, or you're running a bar, you will run into these people and they will make your life very unpleasant if you don't give them what they want, which is usually money. So there is the myth that they perpetrate, which is we do not bother ordinary people, and there's the reality, and the reality is they're a pain in the ass to everybody. Um, and we all end up paying uh, for them in some way or another because they extort money from construction companies, construction costs go high. Um, because they supply workers for the nuclear industry, uh, the nuclear industry continues to exist. Um, because they are often used to cover up scandals, things that should be reported aren't reported because the Yakuza intervene. Um, they, are, they are not a force for social good and they are uh, not true to their to the the bullshit line they give about we don't bother ordinary citizens most of them are bothering ordinary citizens just not the general population 
Here is something that I, I don't like to say, but many cops will kind of tell you off the record is, that, you know, there's a word in Japanese, hitsuaku, which is like hitsuaku, which is like unnecessary evil. They have long been connected to all, all kinds of social spheres and, uh, you know, the Yakuza are so ingrained in Japanese society that I think it'll be a while before you get rid of them. Certainly as long as they have office buildings and business cards and um, the organizations are allowed to exist, it, it seems like you'll never get rid of them at all.